Okay, so um, we're talking about uh, FISBO at the door. So we're going to use the FISBO phone script, but we're going to, there's a couple little modifications we'll talk about, and then I'll give you some things that aren't on the script that we'll talk about. So when you're at the door, it's knock, knock, you know, you know, hi. Um, I was, you know, knocking about the home that's for sale. Are you the owner? And they say, yes, yeah, great. Um, my name is Rob. I am a real estate agent. And I was wondering, how can I help you? And I'll say something like, well, you can't. We're not interested in an agent. So whatever they say, simply repeat it and affirm it. Repeat and affirm. Repeat and affirm. That's so, so important. And it's one of the most underutilized tools um, that you can use. In fact, I'm reading this book right now or listening to a book called um, Never Split the Difference. And it's written by an FBI negotiator. And he goes into the psychology of repeating and affirming. And then, so it does a lot of different things. But anyway, so they'll say you can't. Okay, great. So I'm curious when you sell this, um, when you sell this home, where are you guys going? You know, it, which is on the script, it says, if you sold this home, where would you go next? So, and I just simply say, you know, well, when you sell this, where are you going? Right. It's the same question, you know, without, you know, yes, it's modified to be me, but it is the same question. Right. And they go, well, in the script, in the script well, we're moving to L.A. L.A., well, that's exciting. Well, how soon do you have to be there? Right. So what am I doing right there? I'm qualifying. Right. That's what I'm trying to do with these multiple questions here, right? When we sell this, where are you going, right? My whole goal is to find out why, when, and where. Because once I know why, when, and where, then I make a decision of whether I even want to follow up with them. Does that make sense? I'm not yeah. interested in the appointment or converting them to a lead until I understand why, when, and where. Now, I have to assume they're motivated until they prove to me they're not. <clears throat> and so anyway, so those, and so here's an objection I'll throw at you that you need to answer it and you need to answer this correct, this way. The way that I'm going to share is what I believe is the most correct way. And I'll explain mm -hmm. why. They'll say, do you have a buyer? <clears throat> and if you say, no, I don't know, whatever, you're dead dead period that's their script that they've learned to get you on the ropes and start beating you <clears throat> right <clears throat> they're going to be put you against the ropes and start beating you so the way and so for sale by owners typically um are going to fall into what's called uh an internal processor they're know-it-alls right they know how to do this they don't need any help from anybody I know what I'm doing, blah, 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 right? So to the language pattern you use on an a internal processor is it's, um, it, the, the pattern goes like this. I don't need to tell you. You already know, right? So I don't need to tell you. Then you tell them what it is you want them to know, and then you close it up with, but you already know that. So the way you answer that question is, do you have a buyer? <clears throat> and, it's, and then so you're to respond with, of course, you know, I haven't seen the home. So it just take me a minute to take a quick look at the house and see if it matches any of the buyers I'm currently working with or any new buyers that come into my system. Of course, right? you know, I haven't seen your home. Right. That's how you start off with. Okay. Right. <clears throat> because they're a know-it-all. So if you told them, of course, you know, I haven't, well, then they're going to say, well, yeah, I knew that. Right. So right. because it does, it does two things. One is it causes them to, because if they're an internal processor and they're a know-it-all, then whatever you tell them they already knew, it's now impossible for them to not have known that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you tell them that you have, that, of course, do you know, I haven't seen the home yet. They're like, yeah, well, I know that. So that done two things. One is it took control of their brain. Two, and it got them off of their script that they've learned. See, does so, that make sense? 
Yes. So in response, do you have a buyer? Well, of course. And I'll say. You know, you, I haven't. Seen, of course, you know. But their next question was going to be what? What? Why? Why do you have to see my home? <clears throat> no, you don't know that. You made that up. That's not a fact. Well, no. Questions are going to ask. Right. Right, but if they say right, say well, I work with we work with lots of buyers. I have you know multiple buyers that right now that are you know registered on my website that are looking for homes. And and you could even say, of course, you know, I'm a real estate agent, and we have lots of buyers. I have lots of buyers registered on my website. So once I take a quick look at your home, I can start matching it up what they're looking for. I can go back and <clears throat> and compare it, right? Mm -hmm. So. But the but the odds are great they're not going to have that because when you answered the way I answered, you took them off of their script. They don't have another script. They only have the one script. Do you have a buyer? No? Okay, great. Then get out of here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So as soon as you take them off of their script, they're, you know, they're discombobulated. So they're right. not going to come up with a good challenge after that. And then, you know, and they go, yeah, okay, I knew that, right. So I'm curious when you sell this, where are you guys going? Right, just go right to the next question. Okay. See, because you'll ask a question, and then they go right to their question. So you need to answer their question, but you need, um, but in such a manner that it it disrupts their pattern. Okay. Makes sense. Make sense? Yep. So, and then you just go right to the next question. Okay, great. Well, how soon do you have to be there? Okay. And then, um, you know, and then you say, well, how would you rate your motivation to move, you know, on a scale of one to 10? And then whatever they say, repeat it and say, good for you. I mean, just ask the questions that are on the script. That's it. But the, now, the ones that I, you know, because I'm, I've, I've created the answer. Of course, you know, I haven't seen your home. Now, I've, I've created that because the, the, the question they kept tossing at us wasn't on the script, and I had to come up with an answer that was designed to disrupt them. Okay. Because that's the remember, their goal is to disrupt you. And they have a script, but they don't have a very well written script. They only have one or two pieces. The rest, they, you know, they don't know. Okay. I understand. And then the script is designed. And then the less talking you do, the better. The more questions you ask, the better. Right? Because if you look at that whole script, what is that script? <clears throat> There's nothing on there but questions. Right. What methods are you using? How did you determine your price? Are you prepared to adjust your price? Why did you decide to sell yourself? If you were to list, which agent would you list with? How did you happen to pick that agent? If you were to list, what would you expect an agent to do? How much time will you take before you'll consider? What has to happen before you'll consider? Are you familiar with the techniques I use? Which would be better for you, Monday or Tuesday at 4? I mean, there was not one statement in there. Everything, everything in there is simply a question, and that's the key. You got to get into your head, and you're also looking for why, when, and where. Sure. <clears throat> so when you internalize these scripts so well that you don't have to worry about what to say next, you you can sit there and focus on what they're the the answers you're looking for. The only three answers we care about are why, when, and where. The rest are just designed to keep them talking. Okay. The other thing is you got to practice is mirror and matching, right? So mirroring is you got to match their rate of speech, right? Okay. So if they're, because think about this. So if you're, you know, do you ever get at somebody on the phone if they're like super fast talker? You know, we're like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> so, 
And then if you're a slow, methodical speaker, those two are not going to, it's, it's hard for them to connect. But once you do connect, it's okay. But in order to connect, so when, so, so Carolyn has a daughter, right? <laughs> okay. Now, if you were to call the house, which we don't do that anymore, I mean, and, you know, you call a person's cell phone. So, but if Carolyn or her daughter were to pick up the phone and say hello, would the person on the other end know who it is out of the two? Sure. <clears throat> you mean to tell me they don't like sound alike? No. No, they're two different distinct voices. And they've, okay. I mean, it's like you and I talking. When I talk to you, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't have to ask you. I'm sorry, you're breaking up on me. I said it would be no different than you and I. You recognize my voice and I recognize yours. Right. I understand that. But if you were, if you were to call my house, and if my dad, myself, or my brother answered the phone, you wouldn't know which one was who. You wouldn't know who was answering the phone. <clears throat> because well, no, we all sound alike. I understand what you, where you're coming from. <clears throat> People, we all sound alike in our tribe. That's the point. Right? Okay. Now, once yeah. they start talking, that's a different story. But, um, right. but, but if, you know, hello you know, Aubrey's or whatever, you know, you really wouldn't know because I've learned to talk from them, <clears throat> right? I've learned to talk by mimicking my father when I was a child. I've learned to talk by mimicking my siblings, they're my older siblings as a child. So that's how I learned to talk. So everybody in my family has a similar, like, rate of speech, Vowel sounds, inflections, right? We all have that similarity. So the point is, when you mimic somebody or mirror and match them, their rates of speech and any vowel sounds or something like that, then what happens is you they recognize that voice as a safe voice. They recognize it as somebody from their tribe. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So they, rec they recognize it as somebody from their tribe. So therefore, um, it becomes safe. Now, you don't have to. So, you know, like, let's say the, um, somebody answers the phone, you know, and they go, hello. And you go, I'm looking for Betty. <clears throat> right. You kind of match that inflection. So because everybody in Betty's family speaks that way. I'll give you a story, an example. I was talking to our, um, I was prospecting and I had um, an agent listening in because we had these splitters where they could plug their headset in. You know, they were on mute, but they couldn't speak, but they could hear. Okay. So I had this Asian guy, you know, an Asian's chop, you know, they chop their vowels and things like that, you know? And so, mm -hmm. I was chopping along with him slightly, you know, not, and the guy listening to Ann on me thought I was making fun of the guy, but I wasn't. I was actually honoring him because all his, everybody he knows in his family, that's how they speak English. It's a broken English. So I was just chopping a little bit ever so. So we used to have an affirmation that said, um, I pick up on people's accents and used them ever so slightly in my speech patterns. So I'll give me, so he was very relaxed and talking to me. So, and I explained that to the guy. I'll tell you another story. So I had these two agents. They were on my team. I was a lead agent. I had buyer's agents working for me. And so we were recapping after prospecting and said, tell me about, you know, what happened? And the one agent said, I talked to this one guy. He wanted to come down and beat me up. And the other agent says, oh, yeah, I talked to him too. And I said, what's the phone number? I'll call him right now. <laughs> so I called him up. He was irate. And so, but I could tell he was, um, you know, he was not from Utah. 
I can pick, you know, I could tell by his accent, his dialect, whatever you want to call it. And so, you know, he started going in. And I finally, I just said, so where are you from? He goes, I'm from East L.A. And I said, you're from East L.A.? And you could just like hear a smile come on his face because I spoke the way all the people he knows speaks. And as soon as I did that, he calmed down. And then within a few minutes or less, I don't know, it didn't take long. I was calling him on a cell phone. And this is back, you know, 13, 14 years ago when, you know, cell phone minutes could cost you money, right? So, you know, within a few minutes, I had his home number and he told me to call him in the, in, in, in the evening when he got home. So, but the, he wanted to come down and kick both of their butts. I talked to him within seconds. I had him calm down. And then within less than a few minutes, I had his home number. Interesting. Because I was mirroring and matching him. <clears throat> so it's so critical to learn that stuff. So we have the, so there's a set of tapes on our website called Sales Mastery. Have you seen those? <clears throat> Did I lose you? <clears throat> Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Still there, Richard? <clears throat> <clears throat> Hello. Yeah, I'm I'm back. I somehow just lost you. Yeah. You were on that. video too. You had your video going. That doesn't help your cause. Yeah, I <clears throat> So anyway, um we were mirroring and Matt used to, we're talking about Yeah, oh yeah, but I asked you we have on our website, we have um, uh, a series, an audio series called Sales Mastery. Okay. It's right where the scripts of Baroque Music and the Productivity School are. So okay. it even says on there, this is, you know, a uh, higher level. You should probably go to, you know, the, be, don't listen to Productivity School prior to listening to this one. Okay. <clears throat> so... I'll look, I'll, look, I'll look into it this afternoon. So that's a set of audio that explains the stuff that I've been talking about. Okay. Now, now did they talk about this at um, Productivity School, the stuff I'm talking about right now? The mirror no. and matching? No, because I, I was just happening to be going through my productivity book, and I don't find anything in the productivity book about mirror and matching. Got it. So, um, I will go to our website and take take a look at that. Um, okay, let me let me practice this script today, uh, okay. and then maybe tomorrow we can resume, depending on who's on the call. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, let me okay. practice this script today because I I really want to do. I'm just not getting anywhere on the phones with the FISBOs. So to me, it's better off. That's how I wound up with that one in, in, in Murray recently, was just knocking on the door and talking to them. But I right. wasn't comfortable. I, I wasn't at the door. That I had <laughs> buyers, you know, and they weren't interested in selling. They just wanted to lease it out. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess, you know, I haven't, so let me just practice this FISBO script because I'm, I just believe somehow I'm going to have better luck. Now, the, the reason I haven't up to this point is because of my size and my intimidation. And in today's environment, people are reluctant to open doors. I see somebody, my stature standing at their door. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a definite possibility. Okay, so there's some validity to that? Yeah, it's not a scientific fact. But right. So one of the keys is, and it depends, if, you, if they have steps, take care of by the door, stand down a step or two. Right, okay. Knock on the door and back up. Right. <laughs> Always back up. In other words, when I open the door, I want you to see you a couple feet away. Right. <laughs> That's just one way. Uh, I can't do anything about being intimidated, so um, I'll try this door to, and see how this is working. I'm going to pick two a day and see how it works. Okay. <clears throat> well, yeah, because remember my my... Um, question I always ask, if you were face-to-face -face with 20 sellers a month, would your business improve? And the answer is yes. Well, face-to-face -face with 20 sellers is not going to one FISBO or expired door a day. Right? It's that simple. Right. Now, you might not have to knock on four or five to get one to answer. Right. <laughs> but anyway, okay. Right. So I'll be the seller then, right? Yes. Uh, hi, this is Richard. Uh, now, back up. Are we on the phone? Uh, no, we're, yeah, well, let's do the phone. Let's do the phone. Okay. Uh, and I would just say, hi, this is, hi, this is Rob. I'm a real estate agent. Don't worry about going to Auburn Associates Realty, <laughs> that yeah, kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> and then, are you the owner? And then ask them, and then just change it to, how can I help you? Okay. And then remember repeating the firm. Okay. Hi, talking about the, the home for sale. Uh, is this the owner? It is. Great. My name is Richard. Uh, and how can I help you sell your home? <coughs> you, is it, so go back to the script. Hi, this is Richard. I'm a real estate agent. And I was calling about the home for sale. Is this the owner? <coughs> so you introduce yourself first. And say you're calling about the home for sale. Okay. Let's start over. Hi. Okay. Uh, this is Richard. I'm calling about the home for sale. No, is this, the I'm, this is Richard. I'm a real estate agent. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is Richard. I'm a real estate agent. I'm calling about the home for sale. Is this the owner? It is. Great. Um, and our, how can I help you? How can I help you? Well, okay. <laughs> just that. Just how can I help you? Just leave Period. it at that. Okay. Right. An open-ended question. They have to answer it. There's right. no yes or no. <clears throat> right. Hi. Okay. My name is Rob. I'm a real estate agent, and I was calling about the home for sale. Is this the owner? Yes. Great. How can I help you? So you wouldn't you wouldn't add, and I was wondering, how can I help you? That's it. Oh yeah, you could say I was, I, and I was wondering. Yeah, you could say I was wondering, and I'm, okay. I was wondering right. how can I help you. Okay. As long as you ask the question, how can I help you? So, or the other one is, I used to say, you know, I was wondering how can I be of service to you. It's the same question, <clears throat> but coming from a service perspective. And I like okay. that better. Okay, let's. Um, da, da, da. And I was wondering, how can I be of service to you? Um, well, right now you can't. Okay, well, if you sold this home, uh, where are you going? You've got to repeat and affirm. <coughs> oh, okay, I can't. Great. So if you sold this, where, you know, if you sold this home, where would you go? Or whatever it says, right? I walked away from my screen. <laughs> Repeat and affirm. You know, to, now, if they go into a whole paragraph, obviously you want to summarize it, right? Right. So you just say, so say it to me. So I'll ask you, how can I help you? Well, you can't. Okay, I can't. Uh, so if you sold this home, where would you go next? Okay. <laughs> See, that's all I did is repeat it. And go, okay, 
Right. Okay. So if you sold this, you where would you move to? You wouldn't try to give any. No. Just ask the next question. Period. Okay. So even though they say they can't, don't try to. Repeat, suffice. affirm, ask the next question. There are no, there's nothing in between what I said. Repeat, okay. affirm, ask the next question. There's yeah. nothing. I didn't say anything other than that. Okay. <laughs> remember, when I read through all the questions, right, there was no statements involved in that. If you don't ask that question, you're going to start giving statements, right? Sales is a series of questions that leads people to a decision. And telling ain't selling. So if you start telling them things, you're not selling. Just ask the next question, period. Okay. <laughs> Got it? Yep. Okay. Uh, and was, so and, and so and ask me the question again. How can I help you? <clears throat> or how okay. can I be a service? And I was wondering, how can I be a service to you? Uh, right now you can't. Okay. I can't. If you sold this home, where were, where were you going? Well, we're going to move to L.A. L.A. Well, that's exciting. How soon do you have to be there? I have to be there in three months. Three months. Fantastic. Listen, how would you rate your motivation to move on a scale of one to ten? Well, at least a five or six. Five or six. Good. What methods are you using to market your home? Oh, well, we got the sign. You know, we got some ads. Got some ads and a sign. That's great. Hey, listen, how did you happen? How did you determine your sales price? Well, I had some agents. They gave us some comparable sales. Okay. <coughs> Are you prepared to adjust your price down when working with a buyer? I mean, with no, within reason? reason. Within reason? All right. Terrific. Why so did let you me stop you there for a second. So with, in parentheses is usually repeating or that's the answer. So then you wait for me to say it, then you respond by repeating it. So I right. said, you know, within reason, you go, okay, within reason. Right. Okay. Prepare to adjust your price down when working with a buyer? Um, you know, within reason. Within reason. All right. Terrific. Why did you decide to sell yourself rather than list with a real estate agent? So, um, well, we want to save the commission. Save the commission. Great. Listen, if you were to list, which agent would you list with? Well, we don't have any in mind right now. I don't know. <coughs> um, and if you were to, and, and, and I'm, at that point, can you just skip number nine? If they, if they oh, yeah, have number agent? nine. Yeah, exactly. You don't, uh, I mean, if they say they don't have an agent in mind, you're not going to ask them how they picked that agent. Yeah. All right. Okay. So if you were to list, what would you expect an e-agent to do to sell your home? I'll just get sold. Get it sold. Wonderful. Great. What has to happen before you'll consider hiring an agent? Um, well, if we can't get it sold in a couple of weeks. So if you can't get sold in a couple of weeks, you'll consider hiring. Okay. Are you familiar with the second piece of the home? Um, well, I'm not. No. Well, you're kidding. Listen, let's set an appointment today. Which would be best for you, today or tomorrow at 5 a.m. or 5 p.m.? Right. So just kind of stick to script. So you're saying, let's set an appointment today. So uh, let me let me show you how that goes. So ask me the question, am I familiar with your techniques? <clears throat> are you familiar? No, I'm going to ask you the question. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask you the question. Richard, are you familiar with the techniques I use to sell homes? Uh, no, I'm not. You're not? You're kidding. Well, what would be the best time to show you? Monday or Tuesday at 4? See how that works? Yeah. You're kidding. So tonality is so important. Let me give an example of a word tonality. With uh, I mean, how important tonality is for the definition of a word. Let's take the word hello. So if I answered a phone and said hello, or I walked up to you and I said hello, that's a greeting, right? Right. <clears throat> but what if I went and said, um, hello, 
right? I had that like puzzled look on my face, my hands out, <clears throat> you know. Now what does that word mean? Well, there's a, I would I would say there's some uncertainty <clears throat> in in your from your tone. Right. But my body language and my tonality is the whole meaning of the word, right? Like, what are you, stupid? That's what it means, right? Hello. <clears throat> right? If I said like, you know, oh, so that's what you meant. Hello. I've been saying that all along, right? It's like, not always, you know, are you stupid? It's like, you know, you get it. I mean, you've heard the expression. <clears throat> so does that make sense? So tonality yeah. is so, so important. You're kidding. So pauses are so, so important. Because when we speak, we pause to think about what it is we're going to say. So if you don't pause, then it becomes a script. Okay. Make sense? Yes. <clears throat> so now I'm going to walk through it real quick with you. You're the seller, the agent. So I want you to pay attention to my inflections and my tonality. <clears throat> right? Got it. So, hi, uh, this is Rob. I'm a real estate agent, and I was calling about the home for sale. Is this the owner? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Um, I was wondering, how can I be of service to you? Uh, can't think of anything you can do. Can't think of anything, huh? Okay. No. If you sold this home, where would you go next? Uh, we're moving to uh, Idaho. Moving to Idaho? That's exciting. Well, how soon do you have to be there? Well, we're thinking within the Stick next to the script. Three months. Okay, yeah. Three months. Okay. Fantastic. So how would you rate your motivation to move, say, on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, no doubt a 6. About a 6. All right. Good for you. So let me ask you, what methods are you using for marketing your home? Well, we're better on KSL, and we have a sign in the yard. Okay. So you're going to sign in the yard. You got some ads out there, huh? That's great. Yes. Well, how did you how, how did you determine your sales price? Uh, talking with neighbors and agents that, that we've had come that we know. Okay. So neighbors and agents. All right. Fantastic. So let me ask you a question: Are you prepared to adjust your price down when working with a buyer? Within reason. Okay. Within reason. Terrific. So why did you decide to sell yourself rather than list with a real estate agent? Uh, simply to save commission. So you want to save the commission? Great. Well, if you were to list, which agent would you list with? I don't have anybody in mind. So none in mind right now? Good for you. Okay. So if you were to list, what would you expect the agent to do to get your home sold? Sell so my home. But just get it sold, right? Yes. What? Perfect. Well, how much time will you take before you would consider interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home? Uh, probably two weeks. What about two weeks? Excellent. So what has to happen before you consider hiring a powerful agent like myself for the job of selling your home? Well, if we don't get any buyers, any offers. Okay, so if you don't get it sold or any offers, right? Right. Okay, are you familiar with the techniques I use to sell homes? Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't. You're not? You're kidding. What would be the best time to show you, Monday or Tuesday at 4? Uh, probably Tuesday at 4 will work well. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So you see how it flows? Yeah. And, now and that's a role play, it. obviously. But I sure. want you to I, I wanted you to pay attention to my tonalities. You yeah, know, and your tonality and your inflictions and your pause. Right. Yeah, I I I gained a lot by by having you do that. So it, it didn't sound scripted at all. No. <clears throat> right, exactly. That's why then, so people are adverse to scripts, but I just walk through that thing verbatim. <clears throat> yeah, and I just you know, again more practice, and and I'll be able to do this. <clears throat> right. Okay. But I got to go I'm way over. All right. Talk to you later. <clears throat> See ya. Bye.